ladies and gentlemen, the people, how y'all doing? How is everybody doing? It's a happy Monday. I hope everybody's having a great day. You know, if you're mad that it's Monday, just know that Friday's on the way, baby. And right now it's my Friday. So, you know, I'm feeling good. We're out here chilling. But anyways, people, we're continuing on with the eight passengers case. Now, we have Ruby Frankie. We have her husband, whatever the hell his name is, Frankie. And then we have Jody Hildebrand. Now, a lot of people are saying this woman is the mastermind of the whole situation. I do think that Jody was a strict parent and enjoyed, got off even at having <clears throat> at having control over her kids. But maybe Jody was that little that little fuse that made her flip into complete child abuse. Let's check this shit out. There's a little interview with Jody Hildebrandt's nephew or or niece. I'm sorry. The you know, she's related to her. I think it's her niece. Let's check this shit out. When was the last time you either saw, spoke to, or in a way heard from Jody? Has it been a long time? It's been a long time. I think it was um, a family member's wedding, like probably over a decade ago. You were oh, wow. also under her care at one point, right? Yeah, I was. I was left in her care when I was a teenager um, for a little under a year. Have you met Ruby before? No, I um, I've never met Ruby. I don't I've this is the first time I've ever even heard of her. I have gone and watched um, at least some of her videos. They're, they're very difficult to watch just for my own um, my own experience with that form of therapy or from from the tattoos and the makeup and the hair, the highlights. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I like the vibe, but I could tell she was uh, she was the problem child. You know what I mean? So I'm sure that Jody Hildebrandt had many tactics that she happily employed on this one. So let's find out. Therapy. Um, it's it's quite triggering, to be honest. Um, so I've never met her, um, but the things that she is saying and regurgitating are very, very familiar to me. Um, it's interesting to watch the i mean i and i understand this but it's interesting to watch the world respond to her and kind of putting her as at the forefront and i understand that she's the mother of these children and, it's, and it makes sense but the philosophies and the therapeutic modalities that she's using are jody's and these are these are not new these are not um this this is a pattern that jody has been um, engaged with for at least 14 years um I don't know if there are other people that she's used these on, but she's definitely taught. I know that she teaches parents to use these types of um, therapies, as she as she would call them. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a really interesting experience watching everyone focus on Ruby, and I understand why. But this is Jody. These are Jody's words. These are Jody's ideas. These have are over decades old. So yeah. Is that why you've called Jody the mastermind behind all of this? Yes, um, that doesn't excuse Ruby's involvement and her pe perpetuating these these beliefs and these systems. But Ruby didn't come up with this. Um, Ruby um, obviously supports it and um, has used these on her children. Um, but this is coming from Jody. In short, can so you either there's two there's two theories that Jody was super hard on this girl and she's the problem child and she just hates Jody and wants to ruin her life further, which is highly unlikely. Like, you know, she's just spiteful to the fact that she's going to tell lies about Jody because she knows she's in legal situations. So she's just going to she's just going to step out of the dark and lie on her, you know, like, OK, lame. I don't think anybody would really do that. Or Jody really was out here doing some crazy things to to these kids now she's gonna cover a few things that jody would say she's doing and she wasn't actually doing i guess but it's gonna make you scratch your head like why would she why would her mind be there it almost makes you think that jody wants to do some of these things but let's let's continue you describe what you mean like which practices yeah. are you talking about just to make sure we're clear because i know there's a lot out there so which ones are you talking about that that you've seen that you're hearing about pertaining to her children that you're familiar with too 
Sure. Yeah. Um, so the things that I experienced while living with Jody, I experienced being tied. I experienced being duct taped. I experienced being blindfolded. I experienced uh, severe isolation. I experienced severe emotional, spiritual, and psychological abuse. I experienced um, what does that mean? That being told I, I I shouldn't be around other people, being told that I was dangerous to be around. Um, I was people were afraid of me to the point where I was afraid of myself. Um, I was physically. I was I was forced to sleep outside in the snow. I was forced to sleep outside in the snow. That that's a lot to to say about someone. That's crazy if that's what really happened. But even in Belize, I know some parents who are hardcore. But when we're growing up, <coughs> when we're growing up, we don't really call it abuse. We just call it oh, their parents are just really strict. But see, we don't know. It's because like I'm lucky. I grew up in the house to where I could see the contrast. And I'm like oh, that's low key abuse, dog. But I, I wouldn't tell anybody that. But I'm thinking about it. And I'm, I'm hearing them talk about some shit that happened. Like, oh, yeah, my mom chased me with a machete this morning. And I'm like, um, that sounds terrifying. But, you know, this is the reality for some people. Um, like I said, isolated for up to 12 hours a day. Um, if I if someone wanted if someone spoke to me directly, if I wasn't wearing duct tape on my mouth, um, I had to what? just stare at them and not respond because she also had systems of people that would respond report back to her if I broke any of these rules. Um, and her whole thing, which is deeply, darkly ironic, is that everything is stems from shame and how, how horrible shame is. And that all of the reason, like all of mental illness, all um, ticks, so like OCDs, addiction, everything stems from shame, um, which is just, horrifying because she is the greatest uh perpetuator of shame um she also and this is like a, a very deep connection and why i chose to come forward to the media rather than just staying with the podcast um she accused me of being a sex addict she accused me of being uh addicted to masturbation to the point where i wasn't allowed to i, I mentioned this on the podcast to the point where i wasn't allowed to use tampons um, I wow. never was allowed privacy unless I was isolated. So that so maybe Jody was excessively flicking that bean, and she thought her granddaughter, who was just doing her own thing, was flicking too. Jody was like, "Oh, this is against. This is a sin. I'm flicking this bean, so I know she fl man. No, leave your door open. No flicking for you." And she goes back into the room. Bro, get out of here. Her she sounds like a nut job included the bathroom I was never allowed to have the door closed because she was convinced that I was just constantly masturbating. she was convinced that I was addicted to porn um, watching I had never seen porn at that point in my life I I'd never I didn't even know that people with <laughs> my anatomy could masturbate like I, I had no idea any of this stuff but I just believed her because mm. she everything like one she used religion and god as a mode of control um and a, a mode to manipulate and so i just believed all of these things so her ability to convince you of these uh neuroticisms and um these behaviors is and i was a teenager and so a child in that position of being told this over and over and over and over again which i'm certain he was hmm. um stood no chance she also, because of what the, like the abuse and torturing that was going. See what I'm saying? This is what everybody's starting to think now. The family's low key. The family's kind of brainwashed by these methods at this point, especially the kids. And it's like something about that ten year old. It just didn't click for him. And thank God it didn't. It's something about him. He was like, Nah, bro. This don't make no sense to me. You know. But that's. I think that's what Hildebrandt kind of realized is that hey, I can actually brainwash you. I can actually change the way you do things and make you feel like I have all the answers. And that's scary. That's like you, if you have that type of power, that type of manipulation power, that is actually, that's impressive and scary. Like, you know what I mean? That's really impressive. And it's like, damn, you could do a lot with that. Going on <clears throat> and the, the belief that she had that I was doing something more. So her rationale to, the severity of these punishments and this physical and emotional abuse was 
she wanted to make my life. And this is like her quote, like this is what she would tell me all of the time. She wanted to make my life so uncomfortable that it would force the sin out, that it would force me to confess. So things continuously got worse and worse and progressively more and more intense as a way to get me to confess because she believed that if I had confessed everything, if every all of my sins were out and in the open, that I would be getting better. And I was declining like very fast, exponentially. And um, so she just kept ramping it up. And so to hear Ruby- And look what she did, Jody. She has a, a Medusa piercing, two nose rings, a middle septum piercing, and a bunch of tattoos. Good job, Miss Hildebrandt. <laughs> No, I like it, but like, and I have a bunch of tattoos and piercings, but I'm just saying, man, you do shit like that. Hey, I had strict parents too. Not to that extent, Jesus, but I had super strict parents too. Now I have a bunch of tats and a bunch of piercings. So, hey, there there may be a correlation there, guys. If you notice those kids that are all clean skin and they're just like top tier athletes and they just do, they just kind of like live life at the top, you know, function. I'm not saying it's all of them. But typically, the parents are just kind of chill, you know? It's so like, all right, son, I taught you what's right and wrong. You, you go into that world and figure it out. I don't know. I don't know if that's the best way to, of parenting, but I see that the, the turnout is a bit different, you know? To tell the world that her child is a sex addict, a predator, and has been addicted to porn since he was three years old, it just echoes exactly the things that she was telling me and telling everyone around me. Um, and I know that I, I've, I've, I think if I got, I don't know if I got this right, but I'm pretty sure that she's saying that he even confessed to it. Well, I also confessed to things that I didn't do as a way of trying to get the abuse to stop. Because when you, when she's like drilling it into you both psychologically and physically, that there's more and it will stop once you tell her, because that's what, that's what she would tell you. Like in the middle of the abuse, she'd be like, I'll stop as soon as you tell me. As soon as you tell me what's going on, like what you did. Mm. Oh, she was also convinced that I had had friends. She was a convinced I went, she made me do 12 step because she was convinced I was an addict, like a drug addict as well. I'd never done drugs. I'd never had sex. Again, I didn't know that masturbation was even possible. I had no idea what these things were. Um, so I would start, I just started making things up as a way as like trying to get this to stop. Because I had no no one there to to help me and to save me, and I even I think I even said that on the podcast that I was making things up. And when I spoke to the de the detective um, down in um, St. George days ago, I told her that as well. It's like I and so even if he had confessed, it can it cannot be taken seriously. Yeah, I mean, if you drill something into somebody's head so long, they're either going to tell you something to appease you so you could shut up, or they're gonna um or they're gonna actually believe it you know what i mean but either way it's very similar that all of a sudden her son has this addiction when she had the same situation that would make me jump out the seat and be like yeah i might need to talk to somebody because this shit is it's starting to add up in the wrong way because this child was being and i'm certain that she echoed those words of like if you tell me i will stop um, so what is happening? It just echoes so close to home of what she did to me and the repercussions, the emotional and physical repercussions of that, those actions, like the fact that she can, because the, the thing that's so sinister about this is that it can't be disproven. So even if nothing, even if like she goes to prison, you know, he is, his name is cleared. It will never be fully cleared because it cannot be disproven. So this is going to potentially follow him for the rest of his life. So even with those children being taken out of her care, she is still abusing them. And so with whatever is happening, whatever did happen, I can guarantee you it's not what she is saying. Her business connections classroom, is this the same approach she uses for all of her patients as well that are not family or not Ruby's kids as um, you know? Uh, I I don't know the intricacies of what she promotes and what she teaches on Connections Classroom. Um, if it's anything in, even close, then I mean, I'm certain that there's going to be parallels. Um, I'm certain. I know that she believes that um, 
all shame should be punished. And I, I know that like that. I, so like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't, I, I really don't know. I I've stayed away as much as possible from her and her world um, to just heal and to try to salvage any life that I could possibly live um, post living with her. No, that's crazy. It sounds like Jody is Miss Mastermind. I'm not going to lie. Like Miss Hildebrandt's out here making moves and plays like damn. And it's like it's almost like her little like her little niece was like the practice. Now she took it commercial. You know, now she's a counselor to all these people and all these marriages and instructing all these all these people on how to, you know, deal with their kids like she's it's like building up to a monster. With that said, it sounds like this wasn't really a secret, though. Obviously, you knew about these teachings. Other people in her family, probably both families I've been hearing, knew about some of these practices or had heard of. Why do you think it took to 2023 for a child to escape, go yeah. to a neighbor's house, call 911, and now this is a thing? Like, why did it take this long? Um, I think it's a combination of quite a few things. One, the church supports her. She's been promoted by the church and people trust the church. Members trust their bishops. They trust their stake presidents. And a lot of these people, most people that are going to therapy, if not all, are in a vulnerable position. And she is remarkably convincing. She is also terrifying if you cross her because she, she has and will systematically destroy your life. She destroys your reputation. She de destroys any of, of your credibility. So even, because there are definitely people that have been speaking out against her. Mm. I mean, she was she lost her license because of someone speaking out in 2012. Like this is not, she's not just, everyone's not just been like, okay, yeah, for sure. Free, fair game, free, free for all. People have been criticizing her. That's just that no one has listened. Because one, we have a culture of people. And that's the thing about child protective services and all those other things. Like, it's almost like they have to wait until the tragedy happens and then they step in. And I know CPS is a whole different situation. Like, you hate them or you love them. They, they do bad. They, like, you know, they place you in shitty housing. They do a lot of things that a lot of people don't like. But the main thing I would say is that they just don't move fast enough. Every time it comes to a situation like this, it's after the fact. Like, you know, they didn't come and save anything. The kids saved the family. The 10-year-old kid saved the family, not Child Protective Services, not the police. He, he manned up and escaped his prison at 10 years old. That's crazy. That Like, they need to make a movie off of that. Well, not believing children and not trusting children. And also, children trust their parents and then they and the parents trust the church so there's been and and jody what she does that's so tricky is that she utilizes and uses whatever is available so if you go to her with ocd if you go to her with severe depression she'll use that information as a way of control oh you have ocd because you have deep rooted shame and those ticks are happening because the shame has nowhere to go and so it's coming out in this like this neuroticism and and then or let's say like she'll oh you can you told her that you lied which is a normal human thing that we've all done that doesn't make you a liar oh well you lied you're a liar hmm. now everything you say is a lie and you can't be trusted and she also separates people she keeps people so they don't can't talk and corroborate. Like, and what did the lawyers say about the husband? He he said that they had first step. They would do their little couples thing. She would charm everybody, and then they would have second step, and they'd separate the husband and the wives. And that's when the crazy shit starts to happen. What is she saying now? I don't know if she's seen that interview before coming forward. I don't know if she's making things up, but I mean, why again? What's her gain of making things up other than she really hates Jody? And just wants to lie on her some more to make her case worse. But I don't see that being the case. Like, if I hate my grandfather or something, you know, just because he sucks. Like, he used to beat me when I was a kid or some shit. I'm not, and, and he's, he's, he's facing legal actions, right? I'm not going to go and come out and say all these negative things about him because he's already going through things. I don't think that's what this is. 
I think she saw a corroboration of real disturbing shit that happened to her as a kid. And she was like, oh, yeah, I need to make sure this doesn't happen anymore. Like, even her eyes, they're all wide and expressive. You know, when you're lying, you're not that passionate, you know? It's, it is so vile and tricky and ingenious. Like, Jody is... <laughs> she is a, she is a, she is a very unwell person. I don't I, I don't know her ex exact diagnoses, but I know that she's been diagnosed with a plethora of things. Um, and yeah, so it, it's 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 devastating because I went forward as well. I mean, I went to the police when I was 16. I went I, I tried to do what I could and no one believed me because why would they? She destroyed my credibility. I was an angry teenager. And now I'm just so, oh, you're just like an emotional, angry teenager that, and she had told people that I destroyed my family's life, that I destroyed my dad's life, that every person I come in contact, I destroy. So she sets up the premise. And then when I come forward and try to tell people like, this is what's happening, she can be like, oh, see, Jesse's trying to destroy my life is what they do. Mm -hmm. It just all adds up. So she's so good at protecting those loopholes and discrediting people. Is that why you think maybe other mem members of both families still won't speak out publicly about this right now and are, are staying quiet? Or do you think it's a fear thing or just want to stay out of it? Is there any thought process yeah. on that? I can't speak to why people aren't. Um, I know the culture of my family. Um, I think that it's probably a, a, a probably a number of things. Some people, I think it's just that they've they themselves have been harmed so much by her and they want to stay they just want to live their life and and not be dragged into this. Um, other members, it could be fear. I I really I can't say all I can say. And and again, the only reason why I'm coming forward, I I was not planning on coming forward to the media other than just doing the podcast interview, um, is when I heard that Ruby accused her child of this because it's, and I just hope that this can give the public some context and some clarity of what is happening and why they should not believe her. Yeah, yeah. I did find it super weird. I saw in the in the I saw in the highlights, I should say, that Ruby had accused her son of doing things to the other kids in the family and other kids at camp and, you know, they were sexually motivated. And I was like, "Wow, this is a really fucked up family. That's a curveball from out of nowhere." But again, what if that's her just lashing out. What if, what if that's all Jody right there? That's Jody's training, and she just said, "Fuck it, I'll just say something about him and see if that helps me." Like I don't know, but the similarity of her always, you know, being a, a master addict and all that shit in the bathroom, I see the similarity. And Jody might really be the mastermind. Like she really might be out here making plays. But anyways, y'all, that was pretty much it. We have her pretty niece over here breaking down exactly what was going on when she when she was living with her. And I got to say, Jody, I cannot wait for the trial. The most important person I feel like to to find fault in is Jody and then maybe Ruby Frankenstein just for, you know, following along and doing that to her kids. But I think Jody is definitely number one in this scheme. And if the, all those men come forward from those groups and all that shit, that would be, imagine prosecution gets a bunch of men from Jody's group. I'm telling you, this trial is going to be crazy, top tier. But anyways, people, stay inside. Stay safe. I love you guys, man. I love you guys so much. I'm going to see you in the next one. We're going live tomorrow. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a movie as usual, guys. And um, see you then. I'm out of here.